St Peter Vaughan and as you can see this isn't quite our usual road test. We're on the Bailey Sahara Challenge or should I say Sahara Challenge 2 because this time we've actually made it. The first time they set off they were rather thwarted by the Covid pandemic and had to head back but in 2023 here we are we've made it to the Sahara with completely standard caravans and motorhomes and this Bailey Adamo 75.4T is completely standard. The only things that aren't normal factory fit are the rollout awning. Well, that's just a typical dealer fit accessory and these rather nice chunky off-road tires. Oh yes, and the camel graphics aren't quite standard either. And no, you won't be able to order those for your Bailey Adamo. New camel? Preposterous! But then you probably wouldn't want all these stickers advertising the people that have supported the trip either. But other than that, this is your typical Bailey motorhome. It's 7.49 metres long, 2.38 metres wide, and 2.85 metres high. But crucially, it's on a three and a half tonne chassis. And Adamo, the whole five model range as it is now, accounts for the vast majority of Bailey's motorhome production. That support from Ford and the development of Adamo has meant that the range initially was three models, but is now five. So there's a compact six metre model been added for 2023 in addition to this new twin bed layout, which was the most requested layout that didn't already exist in the range. So what's the point of coming all this way? Well, apart from the fact it's um, pretty spectacular here, it does go to show that Bailey does really test its products and it proves to you, the motorhome enthusiast audience, that well, you don't have to go to Devon or Somerset or even across the channel. You can go much further. 2,735 miles in 19 days was the, the plan from Bristol back to Bristol. Just a short ferry crossing over from Spain to Morocco, and then I joined the trip at Marrakesh. And that was an experience in itself. I'm glad I didn't have to drive this through the center of such a manic city. But here we are in the Sahara now, and really, once we left Marrakesh, the driving was pretty easy. Well, the last five miles was a dirt track, but look, and where we are now, what a place. So enough about Morocco and the Sahara for a moment, because I need to tell you about this motorhome, which like every Bailey Motorhome has Alutech construction. So structural aluminium extrusion framework, all GRP on the outside and a GRP skin on the inside too. GRP protection under floor as well and a six year body structural integrity warranty. Being a Bailey, they've also crash tested it to prove the strength of the furniture and particularly the rear travel seats in the event of something nasty happening. Also, of course, it's a one price, one spec vehicle. Again, in usual Bailey of Bristol fashion. Price is £75,499 and that includes all the things you'd really want, to, want it to include. Things like the TV aerial and 80 watt solar panel on the roof, things like the reversing camera on the back, and also new this year is an Alco frame underneath so you can now fit a tow bar. Ooh, a tow bar. So the base vehicle is of course the Ford Transit with this silver cab as standard. Also included are the alloy wheels, ESP, automatic lights and wipers. And from Bailey you get the big over cab sunroof at the top there. 
The engine is the 160 PS unit mated to a six-speed automatic gearbox, so plenty of power for this three and a half ton motorhome. Looking down the offside, you can see that the windows are the caravan style ones that sit proud of the body. And then here is your gas locker. Plenty of room in there for two, two six kilo cylinders, but they will be one behind the other. Down here is a nice T handle, simple for emptying your uh, grey wastewater. And the waste tank is 100 litres. Freshwater tank is the same capacity, 100 litres again, but that is inboard, so better for winterisation. And then here you've got the smaller of two doors into your garage. The full size locker door is over on the near side. At the back, you'll see that Bailey fit the mountings for a bike rack as standard. Just if you want a bike rack, then get your dealer to fit one. And the rear bumper is a separate section. So if you have those little reversing bumps, which you probably shouldn't with a reversing camera, but if you do, that should be nice and cheap to replace. So looking down the near side, of course, you've got this much, much larger door into the garage here. And headroom in there is just over a meter, 1.03 meters. And actually the width of this side is also 1.03 meters, although it does narrow towards the offside where that smaller door is. You've got tie down points in there, a nice big light just inside the door here, and even internal access into the garage. A couple of little hooks here though, not quite sure what you'd hang on them, but Then moving down the side, of course you've got your cassette toilet servicing hatch. Now your habitation door, that's not linked to the central locking, but it is a nice half wall door with a deep window, a bin, and somewhere for your brolly. Hmm. Nah, don't think I need a brolly today. And then finally, you've got your mains hookup point. And I should say too, that it's a nice low entrance into the vehicle. And of course, there's a fly screen on the door. So that's the outside. And before I turn to a crisp, I think we'll move on inside. But the other thing I should mention is payload. So this is a three and a half ton motorhome and it's quite a large motorhome at virtually seven and a half meters. So payload is something you need to consider, especially if you're gonna travel four up. It's only 344 kilos. Did you know you can drive it on a car license? The first thing you notice when you walk into this Adamo is the spaciousness of the front lounge. And that's because of this huge headroom, 2.14 meters or seven foot. Now there is a slight step up into the cab, but the front seats swivel around easily enough. And the passenger one goes around easily to put your feet up on the sofa. Settees are longer on the offside than on the near side. And then you've got these armrest and scatter cushions, two different sizes of scatter cushions. In fact, you've got so many cushions, you might choose to see, leave some of them behind. Um, anyway, that's a, a personal choice. Table is a good size, even in its folded position. And then there's just one handle to operate to slide it around. and then you can unfold it for family meals or, well, it's almost sort of banquet size now, isn't it? Yeah, plenty of room there to get four people around the table or more. You've got reading lights over the cab seats, spotlights, uh, down lighters under the top lockers in the lounge, but no reading lights, no directional reading lights in the, over the settees. Of course, you've got lots and lots of daylight coming in from the big overcab sunroof too. There's more lighting over the top lockers too, so a nice atmosphere in the evening. Blinds, fly screens as well, of course, essential here in the desert. Um, the blinds are the posher, pleated type with these padded surrounds. The offside sofa is the longer one, as I said, but even here, it's not really a feet up sofa, although you might manage if you turn the other way 
and put your feet up just towards the cab seats. Other than that, well, this isn't a huge lounge, but it somehow manages to feel bigger than it really is. And then if you want to watch telly, well, the TV bracket is high up over by the door. A bit too high up, really, but it does mean that you've got useful space there for coat hooks. And in our weather at home, that might be more useful. Now, this is a four berth motorhome, so side settees are no good when you're on the road. But this is a flexi lounge, as Bailey calls it. So, I have to say, like a number of the Bailey's rivals, but it's still quite clever nonetheless. And the best bit about the Bailey travel seats is that they have crash tested them. Under here, you've got your a Gooty backrest, you get Isofix, now a standard as well. A little flat goes round so that you've got room for your feet. So two, two of the four sofa cushions are used. All the cushions attached with press studs or Velcro. And actually, this is quite a comfortable place to travel. You've got a bit of adjustment on the backrest. You've got a head restraint. Certainly great for kids, but more than adequate for adults too. And of course, you can make another travel seat on the other side. <laughs> table lowers electrically as well to get it more out of the way when you're traveling. And of course you've got three point belts on both seats, a bit more leg room this side as well. And just look at the steel frame underneath. That gives you reassurance if you're carrying your kids or your grandkids. Yes, like so many of these arrangements that convert from side sofas to travel seats, you do end up with some cushions left over. But with a rear bedroom to pile them in, that's not really much of an issue. With the table lowered, of course you can make the lounge into a double bed. And it's a really long one, seven foot three and a half or 2.22 meters long by uh, 1.2 meters, three foot 11 or so wide and then narrowing down to 98 centimeters, three foot three at this end. I'm actually the wrong way around but uh, you'd have your heads that end where it was a bit wider. If you're thinking, why doesn't Bailey offer a drop down bed instead? Well, if they did, the extra weight wouldn't make this practical as a three and a half ton motorhome anymore. So as an occasional bed or bed for the grandchildren, this is what you get. Of course, you won't want to sleep at the front if you have the choice, because at the back, this new 75 Dash 4T layout has two excellent single beds. They're really comfortable mattresses. And look at this for once. Oh, joy. You can properly sit up to read or have breakfast in bed or whatever. And both beds have their own bedside cupboard. You've got more storage up here. You've got a roof vent. Down here, of course, you also got access into the garage. So maybe if you're really bad, your better, your better half will force you down there and you'll have to sleep in the garage. No, probably not. You've got opening windows with fly screens, of course, and these little drapes on either side of the bedroom and bed measurements. Over on the near side, it's 1.84 metres by uh, 86 centimetres or six foot and a half an inch by two foot ten. Over on this side 1.82 metres, um, so just a fraction less by 82 centimetres, so a little bit narrower, um, but still a generous size six foot by two foot eight, generous in width 
more than in length. It's also worth noting that you go up three steps from the lounge to the bedroom and each of those steps includes storage. Once you're here, as well as plenty of room to sit up and read, which I like so much, you've got these reading lights with built-in USBs. Then under the foot of each bed, you've got very generous storage. In each case, there's a hanging rail, but the actual hanging area is quite short, but it's really generous storage under there. So bags of soft clothes, whatever you like, can go into that space. At the foot of the near side bed, you can fit a TV because there's a main socket and aerial sockets over there as well. And of course, if you want privacy, you can slide the door across. Not only have you got this sliding door to shut off the bedroom, but of course the toilet door closes off the whole back end of the motorhome and gives you an ensuite to that great rear bedroom. On the off side, you've got your shower cubicle and then on the near side, your toilet area. Unusually, the toilet door even has a lock on it. And in this area, you've got a nice square basin, good size, and you can get your head right over it. Little shelf area alongside, so practical space for your toiletries. A large mirror that hides your storage, but it could do with some fiddle rails or elasticated straps or something, because things are gonna fall out of there once you've been on the road and moving the vehicle around. The toilet is mounted high, but because you've got a little um, plinth in front of it, that doesn't seem to matter so much. You've got an opening window for ventilation as well, and pull cord lighting. Very nice. On the other side of the van, like so many layouts of this type, because it just works, you've got the shower. You've got this black shower tower, the shower head on a riser bar, good pressure from that and a good spread of jet. But nowhere to put any gels, shampoos, all that sort of stuff, apart from on the floor. And the floor, although it does have two drain holes, which is great, it's also got quite a substantial step in it. If you've got big feet, you really will need to try this for size. You haven't got a shower curtain, you've got these bifold doors. And so to the most British aspect of what's really a very continental layout in this Adamo. But very few continental motorhomes, if any, would give you this Thetford cooker with a mains hot plate and separate grill and oven. But it's unusually concealed behind a matching worktop. Lift that, press stud it into place, and then you've got the gla usual glass worktop of the Setford unit itself. As I say, separate grill and oven, small cupboard below, but then what looks like your nice big kitchen cupboard is the back of the gas locker, so that's a bit, bit of a shame. You have got a nice cutlery drawer though, and then with this, these lids down, you've got a removable draining board that works well, and the plastic bowl for the sink as well. Above you have got a bit more storage space and a built-in microwave. Again, something you'd very, very rarely see in a Continental van. A couple of main sockets well placed there, especially as you've got this worktop extension, so that's very practical for your toaster, kettle or whatever. And if you're thinking, well, where am I gonna put everything? The answer is, these big cupboards over the lounge on either side, well, they really are huge. They've got massive doors, and then you open to one big space. So you're not opening lots of doors looking for the salt or whatever, or the Yorkshire tea or whatever you're looking for, but they do really, again, need bigger lips to just make sure things don't roll out when you've been around a few roundabouts. And then completing the culinary department, which is still on the same level as the lounge before you start going up steps into the back of the motorhome with the ensuite and the bedroom. 
here you've still got massive headroom and you've got this fairly massive fridge. 142 litres with a bottle drawer at the bottom, freezer section at the top and of course automatic energy selection. So we're heading down the Dardis Gorge um, towards the end of our amazing trip in Morocco. Um, camping in the middle of the Sahara with just dunes all around was spectacular. But uh, I should tell you about the driving as well. And driving in Morocco really has most of the time been very easy. Um, most of the road surfaces are good. Uh, some of them are exceptional and some of them are pretty damned awful. Um, this has been the driving highlight um, and on inclines like, like this when we came up here earlier the 160 horse uh, Ford engine copes really really well you've got plenty of grunt and the automatic box is just excellent. On some of the longer downhill uh, inclines it's quite nice to just pull it back and drop into manual and then you can hold the van back on the gears if you want to to give the brakes a little bit uh, of a rest. Handling for quite quite a big van, seven and a half meters um, and considering we've got quite a lot of weight in the garage and we are you know fully loaded for, for camping um, is, is pretty good and the ride quality is excellent even on some of the poor surfaces. Um, yes, you know, at times you can feel it's quite a big van, but uh, generally it's, you know, you've got the reversing camera built in here. Um, you've got the twin lens mirrors, so maneuvering is, is no issue at all. And it's, it's been a, a pleasure to drive um, the Ford. And an absolute thrill to, spend time in Morocco it's and they called it the Bailey Sahara challenge but actually it hasn't been that much of a challenge as long as you remember that you need cash everywhere um, some of the campsites are a bit basic but what an experience what an experience I would definitely definitely like to come back <laughs>